All right, buckle up, ladies and gentlemen. We are going in for a total review before we get into what is going on with money and education right now. Hi everyone, I'm your host Justice Graves. This is my channel and you will notice right off the bat that we have a few new features and by features I mean graphical implementations on the channel. You can find me at my Twitter and at my locals. Those should be right below me on the screen if I put them incorrectly. Um, I have a new video editor. That's also why it's taken me a little bit of time before I decided to publish and record a video because I'm going to try and do some new implementations. Um, I don't know exactly how to call or to properly pronounce the new program that I'm using. It's called KDEN Live Video Editing Software. Um, I'm using it on my Ubuntu, my Linux desktop, on my laptop. That is the program that I'm using. The exact version that I'm using is in the description, as is that I'm using OBS Studio to record, which I put in the description of all of my videos. There's also a lot of other stuff that's going to be in the description today. So during this video, you're probably going to see new different graphical features that I throw onto the screen or different ways that I'm going to communicate with you um, during this. So it's going to be a little bit more of an actual active YouTube video rather than just me chanting into a screen, um, which hopefully will be nice. Now today's video is going to be a little bit longer because again, we're going to go into an overview. Hopefully we're going to keep this under the time limit that I like to set for myself. I even have two sides of notes because we're going to have to go into this pretty deep. So let's just kind of overview what have we talked about with regards to the American Rescue Plan Act? What have we talked about with all this money flowing through education? We've had a few videos on this channel sort of covering it. I'm just going to go in order with what we've sort of talked about before we get into this, into the meat and potatoes of this particular situation. So for example, my 18th video on YouTube was about the federal rulemaking process because in the beginning of all of this, when I created my YouTube to start my campaign to be on school committee and then that kind of dropped off because I resigned and now I'm using it to just spread information, is the issue of how there was the civics, the new civics regulation that the Department of Ed was going to do that Secretary of Education Cardona was going to push forward. Um, and so I explained the rulemaking process in my 18th video. On my 19th video, I talked about that specific emergency with the Department of Ed that they were going to help and put in civics regulations for grants to promote CRT, Critical Race Theory, 1619 Project, Radical Anti-Racism, Anti-Racism, Kendi's Vision of the Future, etc. Video number 22, we talked about the Elementary and Secondary Education Act of 1965 as amended, specifically Chapter 20 of the United States Code, Section 6661 to 6663. And no, you are not stroking out when you see the triple sixes. That is the section of law as it is currently codified that was important in that video to discuss what sections were relevant for the civics education grants requirements that Secretary Cardona and his regulatory team wanted to change. And just to sort of re-highlight that, remember the federal rulemaking process is different from how a bill becomes a law. It is how arbitrary bureaucrats make things into law who were never elected. They were just appointed by an appointment by an appointment of somebody else, and they came up with this and decided, hey, we're going to make it into law, and it has the force of law. So just a reminder, that's how our government works. On episode or video number 23, they feel like episodes sometimes, um, we talked about evidence-based interventions, again, in Chapter 20 of the United States Code, Section 7801, Definition 21A, talking about the What Works Clearinghouse and what evidence-based interventions are actually supposed to be, meaning when they grant these grants for doing novel approaches to education, what are they actually supposed to be doing? And also talking about how critical race theory and how SEL, well, later on, how SEL is, you know, doesn't fall into that but people manipulate data to make it so it is. So we live in that universe. We live in that timeline. Um, if it doesn't horrify you any more than it horrifies me. Um, episode or video number 24, I should just call them episodes. Um, video number 24, simplified version of the issue with the Department of Elementary and Secondary Education. And, well, not Department of Elementary and Secondary Education. That's in my state's department. We're talking about the Department of Ed, the Federal Department of Ed. 
Um, then we have video number 41 where I talked about and exposed with all that wonderful slideshow of images how the states were promoting basically critical race theory and critical pedagogy on steroids through all of their plans um, and sh you know in order which ones have issues um, which is a lot of them um, and then of course we went through and talked about how in the 43rd video that I've ever made on this channel how Arizona's ARP ESSER plan works and how bad it is and how manipulative it is and how that plays into what your school's DEI codes are, or not what your school's DEI codes are, though that does play a role a little bit, but what your state's DEI plans are and their codes and what they do with their administrators regulatory-wise at the state level, how that can impact what happens locally when they start saying to spend money on this stuff. And through when we talked about Arizona, we talked about how there was a lot of other components to it. I actually talked less about ARPA itself and more about the implications of what was happening with the state's regulations and then going down into what was spent before with the CARES Act money and the CRRSA or the CARES 2 Act money, the CARES 2 Act money. And I don't think people understand that those two acts primed us for what's happening now in education. And what do I mean by that? Well, if you don't know what those acts allow or don't allow, I have the United States Department of Education fact sheet, because of course I do, that goes over some of what you can and can't do, and hopefully there's some red flags that sort of come up in your mind, but we are just going to switch over, and I'm going to show you. And if you go all the way down to this, and actually Massachusetts has it linked on its Department of Elementary and Secondary Education page, so you're going to see that in the description to this video. It's one of the first things in the description, um, or not one of the first things. All the videos that I have that talk about some of this other stuff are in the description. In the description is also this document. But if you look at, for example, you know, ESSER fund, ESSER 2 fund, ESSER 3 fund, um, or ARP ESSER fund, um, for example, they can spend, school districts who get this money can spend this money um, for anything retroactively back to March 13th, 2020. That is the magic number for when everything started with the global coronavirus pandemic. That is the magic amount of money that anybody can, um, can go back and spend on. But what can, exactly can they spend on? Well, if we go further down a little bit, you'll see on the layer uses of funds and reservations, which are sort of highlighted, but I didn't. You'll see under CARES Act, it says that it allows for the use of funds relating to preventing, preparing for, and responding to COVID-19. Now, that's a little bit not completely transparent. You can use the money in other ways, such as you could use the money to keep a staff member. Let's say it's a nurse staff or to hire a new nurse staff to help administer tests or to help with contact tracing, which then led when we went to ESSER 2 and that new act was passed, the CRRSA, that it explicitly allowed um, for hiring new staff and avoiding layoffs. And if that doesn't make your municipal manager siren sort of ring off, um, it should because we're talking about using a one-time money to hire new staff and to avoid layoffs. One-time funds. It's not in the budget. It's just it got plopped on your desk. And every school district's doing it like this. This is not exclusive to anybody. And then we have, well, our Besser. And also remember, and Arizona was a great example of this, um, which I need to sort of review more in depth with you so you can understand it if I didn't really highlight it so much in the other video I did on it, that the new staff that they were also hiring in some of the states were social workers and psychologists. Now, you see where I'm going with this, because now we're talking about critical race theory and SEL in school districts. And then, of course, the next you know, reasonable evolution is to just throw a bunch of stuff at it, like Congress did. And you know, you can use 20% of the total allocation of the ARP ESSER funds or the ESSER free funds for a bunch of different things relating to learning loss, including but not limited to social and emotional needs and hiring new staff and avoiding layoffs as 
was allowed in the ESSER II funding. So if that doesn't concern you, I don't know what doesn't or what would concern you. Because when I say this to you, what should be going off in your mind is when these people have to be laid off, what's going to happen? And you're not hearing about massive layoffs in school districts, are you? Because um, that hasn't happened yet. But it will. Um, or your tax bill is going to go up. So those are two things to think about, either at the state or at the local level. That's it's going to be crazy, but we're going to see it happen. Um, and the reason why the whole new staffs and layoffs part is so important when we go back and sort of review this documentation is that under all of these acts, including CARES all the way up to ARPA, what you need to sort of understand from CARES all the way up to ARPA, trying to keep track of where I am on the screen, um, we have these requirements of maintenance, maintenance of effort, MOE, and maintenance of equity, which basically means when you look at it, that whatever you have done, and it's a little different depending on what state you're in, but whatever you have done in the previous year or the level of the level of support and the level of services that you've given to your students or to your pupils, you have to maintain that. So now they've hired a bunch of new staff in order to handle the issue of testing and contact tracing and all this SEL stuff and the emotional trauma of the pandemic. And now what the government is saying is keep it. And if this sounds like a centralized approach to pushing a future curriculum, which is what the Department of Education was trying to do a few months ago, which we technically lost that battle because it just became optional. Senator uh, Secretary Cardona made it optional. Optional. Nothing is ever really optional. When you put it in the optional column, it means you should probably do it because it's going to be regulated in the future. But I don't know if there's a but to that. It's just it's bad. So you're probably asking at the end of all this, what are we going to cover next on this channel? What else should we actually know about the American Rescue Plan Act? And actually, here's a better question. Why isn't anyone else covering this? I know there's been a few people online who have been like, you need to keep going with ARPA and talking about ARPA because no one else is talking about it and no one else is talking about where this money is going um, or what this does or what the categories are, et cetera, how it is slicing up across the states. And it's true, there are not, there's like little blog posters here and there. I would technically consider myself a little blog poster because I only have like 150 subscribers at the time of this, but I guess a lot of people want me to keep going. And we do have some people covering it. You know, if we're talking about Sloan R, I'm not going to try and say your last name. It's a horrible plan. Um, but Sloan's been jumping up and down about the SEL thing, what's been going on with Panorama. Hint, even the best state in the union. That's a big title. I'm not going to call it the best state in the union. I'm going to say probably one of the most secure states in the union right now that isn't falling for all the nonsense going on with all this funds going around. Um, New Hampshire is also in Panorama's pocket, or Panorama is in their pocket, because they are also hiring their services. For those of you who don't know, and we covered this a few times on this channel, but not totally. It's been covered more on other channels. Uh, Panorama does SEL. SEL is basically brainwashing for your children, or, you know, mental conditioning. Let's just call it that. I'm trying to simplify this for this video purpose, for the purposes of this video. It's not good. Sloan does a better, a way better job of explaining it. Um, and so doesn't Deb Philman. Um, you know, Sloan's been on. She's talked with Deb about stuff. But Deb, from The Reason We Learn, who is also on Locals, and you're going to see on the screen here that I'm going to pump up her Locals, which is at thereasonwelearn.locals.com, and you should go and be a free member or be a paid member of her group. Um, she's had some famous hits on her channel discussing some of these issues, such as special ed rights violations, lawsuits, are co are going to cost taxpayers millions. Other hits such as translating and decoding the hidden CRT in state DEI policies. Personal favorite. Then we also have Biden's Department of Ed getting ready to promote CRT as a national curriculum, which I've talked about and jumped up and down about from the implications of it from a government standpoint. 
and going all the way back to you know what is last but certainly not least and is one of the big things that you should all be paying attention to and that Deb had chanted about nine months ago you're being lied to about the CARES Act money for education and honestly that video should have had more views on Deb's channel so you should probably go and watch that video on Deb's channel I'm gonna link that video in the description down below now, why haven't other YouTubers really been jumping up and down about it? Now, I know different people, you know, have been covering different spectrums of this, but why haven't other local people been covering it? Why hasn't this been covered in local newspapers? Why aren't other people talking about it? I'm going to tell you about an exchange. I'm not going to flash it up on the screen, but I'm going to tell you an exchange with another YouTuber back when I had started covering the issue with the ARPA money and not with the ARPA money, but with the care stuff and with the other things going on with the Department of Ed's new regulation. I had asked, could you please spread this information out? At the time, this YouTuber had a child in public school and was running for school committee. And that YouTuber then wanted favors from me, or wanted me to get them a favor. Did not make too much sense because it wasn't a favor for me to give. Because quote unquote, it was a favor that they shared out that information of what the Department of Ed was doing. A favor that they were going to promote the 1619 project and Kendi's work in grants where they were going to push that up on the list as necessary as necessary items for grants i wouldn't call that a favor that i told you about that i would call that uh your child's in public school you should be aware about this and you should be up in arms so just be aware that there are youtubers out there who are just jumping on the crt bag in CRT bag and cheese. The CRT wagon for clicks and giggles, as I call it. And um, it's not what we do here. I don't even get paid to be on here, but you get the idea. But not everybody is. Uh, Deb is on here for actually good reasons. Can't say that about a lot of other people. Really can't. A lot of bad, a lot of bad fangs. All right. So what are we going to cover in the next video? Because in this one, we're just kind of looking back, back on the channel, um, on my channel, and we're going to move forward on what we're going to be working on in the future. Um, so the next video that I'm going to do is either going to be about reviewing section 2001 of the ARPA plan, which is the exact plan that, um, not the exact plan, but the exact section of the American Rescue Plan Act that covers it and some of the subsections that it references in, you know, federal law that we sort of need to go over or and if I don't do it in the next video it's going to happen in the video after that I'm going to talk about how Arizona has been spending CARES CCRSA or the CARES 2 money um, and the ARPA money in education break it down and analyze it especially what's been going on with their um, with their school psychologists that they're spending money on and especially with what they've been doing with spending more money um, in the Department of Family Services with um, all sorts of wonderful stuff over there. And as you can see, that was the wonderful was sarcastic. So that's really all I have for you. Testing new video stuff up, wanting to try and get a baseline before we go into this week on some of the other stuff that I wanna cover with regards to ARPA and the money flowing around. Please like, share, and subscribe if you like this content, and I hope to see you soon. Thank you for everything that you do by watching and sharing this video, and the next few are going to be ugly, ugly videos where I'm pretty much just going to look you straight in the face and say, why are you thinking that public schools are salvageable or private schools are salvageable, as we're going to also sort of cover a little bit here. Um, but that's it. Thank you. Have a great rest of your day.